Hello everyone. I've been asked how I might go about creating a component that looks for a switch change on a panel and automatically fires a macro when you change the value of that switch. So when you click on the switch, a macro gets triggered. So I'm going to show how I might go about doing something like that. I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to do it in App Developer. When you create a component, you can um, create an embedded component or an app developer component. But you can also create components for both. Now, the, if I'm in app developer when I'm creating a component, then the default will be that it's app developer that that component will appear in. Uh, likewise, if I'm in embedded, then the default is that it will appear in embedded. So if I create a new blank project, I'll show you whereabouts you can add the um, go to file, export, uh, configure, and then look in advanced and edit. Here is where you can uh, make available uh, the app developer and the embedded compatibility. So you can see at the moment, app developer is the default, and we can't we can't untick that. But then we can choose whether or not to make it available for embedded mode. So I'll leave it on for both for now. Okay, so let's make a quick start. Uh, I want to run through this fairly quickly. Um, so hopefully what I'm doing is reasonably obvious. I've got a 2D dashboard panel and onto that I'm going to add a control switch. The default state is off um, and we're going to work with that and what we're going to do is we're going to create um, a few events. We're going to create a simulation start event just by uh, double clicking on add new and then selecting the macro that's created and we're also going to create a timer event. Add new, OK. And then under Macros tab, we've got an EV Star and an EV Timer event. OK, so on EV Start, what we want to do is we want to Command Icons, Simulation Macro, and that will call the built-in function, uh, which is System Timer Start. The identity is if you've got multiple timers running, you can tell which one's fired. I'm just going to set that to zero. The milliseconds is the number of milliseconds to wait. Now, Windows operates on like a, a 50 millisecond tick. So it's likely that the minimum value you can enter here is going to be around 50. Um, if, you, if you need more higher resolution than this, then, then yeah, it's better to do things like polling. Uh, but for a lot of things, 50 milliseconds is fine. Um, so I'm going to set this to 100. That's, that's double the amount. Um, and what that does is when we start our simulation, the timer will start firing. And after 100 milliseconds, this macro will be called. I actually need a second event, which is simulation stop, sorry, a third event. So I'm just going to create a stop macro. And under EV stop, instead of timer start, I'm going to have timer stop. Now I'm having to manually stop the timer because as this is a um, as this is a, a simulation call, the, the timer can actually run when the simulation is not running. Um, so when the simulation stops, we're stopping the timer operating. Now on a microcontroller, when you start a timer, um, the timer will keep firing again and again and again. This is not the case in the simulation. In the simulation, you, you have to re-enable it every time. So in our timer event macro, we, we re-enable the timer to start again. Um, I'm going to, I keep hitting control and S, so I'm going to give this a name. Um, so I'm going to call it sim switch comp. 
just save that to my desktop. Okay, so in the timer event, what I want to do is I want to um, I want to get the state of the switch and store that into a local variable. So it's a bool, so I'm just going to call it SW. I also need um, in my globals a variable of the type bool, which is old SW. And then I want a decision here, which is if dot SW is not equal to old SW, then what we're going to do is we'll update our old switch value with the new one. Now what we want to do is we want to fire a macro call. Uh, so what I'm going to add is I'm going to add um, some new properties to allow us to do this. So our cosmetic name will be uh, macro, macro name. The property type will be a macro call. The property variable is uh, macro name without a space this time. If we want to, we can give it a bit of a tooltip by clicking this button here and say macro to call when switch state changes. Okay, so let's add a simulation uh, icon here, built in functions, system. First of all, we want to check the macro exists. Um, so the message name or the macro name is our macro name property and that returns a type bool. So let's add a new macro for that, which is check. Um, we'll add another decision. So if the macro exists, then the next thing we'll try and do is we'll try and call that macro. Built-in functions, system, call macro. And again, we just pass in our macro name. Okay. Now we might want to add a few other things, like um, we might want to expose some of the properties of the switch. So let's add our on label and our off label. So these are now available to the user. And I think that is about it. So if we go to File, Export, Configure, let's call this the Sim Switch um, Macro. Give it a com cosmetic name of Simulation Switch Call Macro. Let's put it under um, Controls. We could add a description here if we wanted to, and an icon. Uh, the interface. I don't think we need an interface, but what we might want to do is um, allow the user to, to read and write the switch as you would be able to normally. If I click on components and I right click on get state, I can expose the top level. OK, and set state, expose to top level. What that does is it makes these functions available to the to the user. So under export configure, you should now have two macros that are now set to downloadable. I'm going to change those to simulation because they're, they're really only available in simulation. And OK, I'm going to export. I'm going to export that to my uh, non-release folder. And then if I create a new flow code project, uh, create another app developer project. And this time on my 2D panel, I want to add in a simulation switch call macro. So there's our switch that we've just made. And I also want to add in uh, something like 
but no, the, the logo indicator. Um, I'm going to create a new macro, which I'm going to call um, increment. increment. And what that's going to do is it's going to take the value of a global variable, which I'll call count, to initialize that to zero. Um, command icons, I'm going to say count equals count plus one. Let's see how high the logo indicator can go. It can go up to eight. We'll use count as our parameter. So then if count is greater than eight, count equals zero. Change that around slightly. Okay, so whenever that macro gets called, it's going to increment our count value and it's going to send that uh, value to our logo indicator. For this component, I, I'm going to give it um, some some labels. So um, pressed and maybe on and off is, is better, on and off. And then for the macro name, I'm gonna call increment. And then in main, I'm just gonna create a loop just so that we stay in the simulation. And with any luck, when I run the simulation, everything's working as expected. I've been Ben Rowland and this has been a demonstration using Flowcode 9.